1987 sees the fifth year of Superbike Magazine's Ultimate Street Bike Competition. Put simply, the Ultimate Street Bike Series is a chance for you, the general public, to see how quickly your bike can dispose of a standing start quarter mile. The venues for this year are Round 1 at York Raceway in the once peaceful Yorkshire countryside. Round 2 and we're over the water to Ramsey Prom in the middle of the Isle of Man TT week for the 1 8th mile dash against the clock. Back to the heart of Warwickshire for round three at Long Marsden. Round four sees us at Santa Pod Raceway, Bedfordshire, the home of British drag racing. The fifth round takes in another new ultimate street bike venue, Cranfield Airfield. In addition to these venues, we have a grand final for the fastest riders from the various classes at Long Marsden. The rules are simple. Your bike can be any shape or size, so long as it's got two wheels and is in every way street legal. We do make exceptions for noisy exhausts. Each bike entered finds itself scrutineered for safety at each venue by trained personnel. This year, the only change to the competition classes is the formation of a new two-stroke twin class aimed at catering for LC riders. There will still be an open two-stroke class as in previous years. The other classes remain unchanged. The turbo class for all blown motorcycles, including factory turbo bikes. The nitrous oxide class, four-stroke twins, and finally, the open class for any bike that doesn't fit in any of the other classes. The first meeting for 1987 takes us to Steve Murty's Pennine Raceway near York. At trackside is Tony Middlehurst, editor of Superbike magazine. Hello and welcome to the 1987 Ultimate Street Bike. My name is Tony Middlest, I'm the editor, and uh, despite appearances, we're not in the middle of summertime. It's actually late April and we're at York for the first round of this year's Ultimate Street Bike competition. Lined up and ready to go, some 150 track-hungry competitors, all eager to be the fastest on the Pennine Strip. An explosive start at York saw Steve Burns on his 1105cc Turbo GSX Suzuki chucking down an early gauntlet with a 10.01 second run at 144 miles an hour. This he quickly reinforced with a 9.97 second run at 147 miles an hour to give York its first ever ultimate street bike nine second run. Col Rule, always keen to pick up a challenge, was charging hard on his Suzuki in the open class turning in low 10-second passes with a regular ease. Steve Murty's gamble of an early date for the Ultimate Street Bike was paying off. Large crowds and plenty of action. The only real disadvantage of the early date was that there were some notable absentees, including Bill Hunter and Ken Taylor. But the Ultimate Street Bike competition is not only about top names. For many, it's a totally new experience. Paul Wilson on a similar Formula One Ducati, they provided the crowd with a rare four-stroke twin battle. Other four-stroke twin competitors included Ducati-mounted Jim Clayton and Mark Sanderson. Finally, there was Keith Pearson on his blown Triumph twin of 1957 vintage, sadly not reaching its full potential at York. We mentioned at the beginning that the formation of the new two-stroke twin class was aimed at settling those long-standing arguments about who really does run the fastest stroke a twin. The Yamaha-dominated class provided us with some rather stretched specimens, like Douglas Clark's 350LC, which adds some seven inches to the stock wheelbase. The class, an obvious success, produced runs dipping into the 11-second bracket. Still with two strokes, Rod Spry, who had dominated the two-stroke open class since the first Ultimate Street Bike back in 1983, has now moved into the competition bracket, allowing the likes of Bill Colcutt and John Kuhn to emerge from his shadow on their Suzuki GT750 Kettles ahead of the Grand Prix replicas and infamous H2 Kawasaki triples. And what's this we have? Private coaching for Tony Middlehurst on the Project Black Jet by none other than Pip Hyam himself. Once to the line, Tony was en route to another 11.4 second run at 125 miles an hour. Still with the open class, Chris Jory and Craig Ashton were both running in the tens with their Suzuki GSX 1100Rs, seemingly producing the goods in a mild state of tune, as Andy Pandy Brewster had done in last year's Ultimate Street Bike Series. 
With the open class representing over two-thirds of the entries at York, there's plenty of action. With Yamaha-powered machinery old and new. Nicholas Walker on his chain drive XS 1100, launching hard. As was FJ mounted Mark Pearson. Paul Baxendale on his FZ 750 managed to cover the York quarter mile a staggering 16 times. And Richard Lawson gave many of us our first glimpse of the Genesis on the strip. Who said that singles were slow? The giant killing SRX 600 of Miles Peters was more than a match for some high tech multis. The most exclusive Yamaha at the meeting was that of Stuart Hellier's, an FJ 1200 bristling with goodies and sporting the most stunning paintwork to appear outside the Tate Gallery. Mention Kawasaki and most people will reply Z1, a legend in its day and still turning heads 14 years on. This pristine Z1 owned by Norman Phillips was running times in the 12 second bracket. 11 second times were recorded by both Chris Easter on his rather smoky GPZ 1100 B2 and Matt Taylor on his GPZ 1100. The GPZ 900s and 1000s proved their popularity by filling a large proportion of the mid placings. And what Kawasaki mentioned would be complete without showing some lime green racers. Drag racing and Hondas don't usually go together unless your name is Russ Collins. On the day, one of the highest placed Honda finishers was Michael Bloomer on his CB900F running 11.79 seconds at 116 miles an hour. Reinforcing the Suzuki superiority of this event were Alan McTaggart on his heavy sounding Katana and what we could see of Carl Hindle peering at us from his GSX 1100. Or was he just looking out for brother Mark? The nitrous oxide class was being closely followed by Trev, who seemed to be offering support to the two fastest runners, namely David Clemenson on his Kawasaki GPZ 1000 RX, and Owen Lewis on his GPZ 750 Turbo, who turned in a fine 11.05 second run to secure seventh place. The Battle of York was drawing to a close. The good weather and action proving too much for some. With only a handful of turbo bikes at York, Jimmy Dunn on his ESD Suzuki and Ian Toms on his Katana could do little to catch runaway early leader Steve Burns, who still led with his 9.97 second run at 147 miles an hour. Second was Col Rule on his Suzuki with a 10.4 at 138 miles per hour. Third was Jimmy Dunn on his Suzuki Turbo with a 10.46 at 131 miles per hour. Fourth was Craig Ashton on his GSX 1100R with a 10.73 at 129 miles per hour. Fifth was Chris Jury also on a GSX 1100R with a 10.87 at 126 miles per hour. And sixth was Richard Prosser on his Kawasaki, breaking the Suzuki stranglehold with an 11.04 at 125 miles per hour. Afterwards, we got Tony Middlehurst to have a word with Steve Burns. Uh, well, Steve, uh, you've won today with a 997 at 147 mile an hour. I believe you've got a new bike here for this year. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about it? Yes, Tony. Um, as you can see, it's one of the well, later type Suzuki 1100 chassis. And I built I built the bike for the Ultimate Street Bike. This being the first one of the 1987 season. And from the response I've got today out of the new chassis, it's um, it seems to be going really well. I'm getting the power down to the ground, and um, I should be in with a shout of um, further miles possibly.